One of my kids' absolute favorite breakfasts is cinnamon rolls. We are three families who come together to help each other grow in our faith, family, homesteading, and whatever else life throws our way. Join us on this journey as we sow and grow together. So uh, it's in the afternoon right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping cinnamon roll dough for tomorrow. I found out not too long ago that I am sensitive to gluten, which if you know anything about the way our food has evolved over time, that's not really all that surprising. But if I ferment the dough first, so in other words, make it a sourdough, then I can actually tolerate it. So we're gonna just go ahead and make some sourdough cinnamon rolls. And I thought that I would go ahead and bring you guys along. I either got this recipe from The Clever Carrot or Farmhouse on Boone. Both are excellent resources. I suggest that you go check it out if you're into sourdough. We're starting off with two thirds of a cup of whole milk. And to that, I'm going to be adding eight tablespoons, so a full stick of butter um, that has been melted. After I get the milk and the butter set aside, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my mixing bowl. My KitchenAid actually is not working right now. It broke a while ago. We have like a little baking business from home and we just worked it too hard. So anyways, I'm going to still be doing it in that same bowl, but I'm not gonna be doing any of it with the paddle attachment. I am going to be mixing it all pretty much by hand, which of course is how they did it in the good old days. So we can most definitely do the same thing. So once I grab that, I'm going to go ahead and start adding um, some of the other ingredients to that bowl, including the super yummy bubbly starter. Look at that sourdough goodness. And if you don't know what sourdough starter is, basically it's flour and water that have already been joined and that have had time to start the fermentation process. It is a way to capture good natural yeast, which is, you know, alive. And that's what's going to start breaking down something that's on the outside of the flour particles. So basically it's going to make it easier for us to digest, which is why a lot of times when people have gluten sensitivities, it's okay for them to eat sourdough. Now, if you are highly allergic to gluten, I am not <laughs> talking about that for you, but it is people who are not allergic to gluten, but over time have developed a sensitivity to it, like myself, this can really, really help us. So if you find yourself in the same boat, sourdough is the way to go. And honestly, sourdough is healthier for us anyway. Go check out the Weston A. Price Foundation. To our mixing bowl, we are gonna go ahead and crack a nice egg. Then we're going to get about half of a cup of our sourdough starter. Mine's just a little bit more than that. You see it's overflowing. Your sourdough should be bubbly. Then we're going to put in two tablespoons of sugar. I use cane sugar. And we're gonna just give that a really nice stir to make sure everything is incorporated. The egg yolk is popped, all that good stuff. Then we grab our milk and butter mixture that we set aside before and go ahead and add that to our mixing bowl as well. Then of course our flour and I use King Arthur's organic all-purpose flour. It's unbleached. It's the same thing that I put in my sourdough starter when I'm feeding it. It's just a really nice flour. We're going to measure out 300 grams for this recipe. And finally, just a teaspoon of salt. Then we're just gonna mix everything really well until we get a nice homogenous ball of dough. It will be pretty sticky, so don't expect it to feel like, you know, sourdough bread dough, for example. Then you'll just come in and scrape down those sides before covering your dough with a nice damp tea towel. The towel is on over here, and I'm going to go ahead and start the timer for 30 minutes. While that's under there, I'm gonna go ahead and start on our family's dinner and I'll be back with you in a minute. So the timer just went off. It's officially been 30 minutes for the dough. We are going to go ahead and knead it for about six to eight minutes. If your KitchenAid mixer does work, then you can just have it in the KitchenAid with a dough hook for six to eight minutes, which is super simple. If it's really sticky, put in just a little bit more flour, maybe just like a, a tablespoon or so at a time until it feels like it's not so, so sticky anymore. But for those of us who are currently mixer challenged, is that what we're gonna call it? I don't know. We can go ahead and mix it with our hands and still be able also to add flour if it's a little bit too sticky for us too. 
So I go ahead and just feel the consistency of my dough to see what I'm working with. And then I'll go ahead and flour my surface and begin the kneading process. There are several different ways to be able to tell when a dough is done. Really, it's kind of just like the feel of it. It'll start breaking less as you're kneading it so that you can really tell that those um, strands of gluten that make it more like a bread are holding together well. You can do something called the window pane test. I'm sure there are things you can look up um, to see how to do that. But really, I just kind of go by feel. And as long as you are kneading for about eight minutes, you'll get there. Okay, so once we have our dough ball nice and how we want it, then we can go ahead and get it into a different bowl that's been greased with butter, and that is where it's going to have its major rise happening. So even though right now it's only about to be four o'clock, I'm going ahead and putting it in the bowl that it will be in overnight until the morning. Normally I would make this later on in the evening when it's a little bit closer to bed but we have a swim meet tonight so that's just not possible so it's nice to go ahead and be able to start its first rise early so now i'll set this somewhere where it can rise overnight and we'll check on it again in the morning my daughter arwen loves to bake so of course she had to pretend that she was making some sourdough too I did also forget to mention about half an hour or an hour into the rise, go ahead and take off your towel and cling wrap and just give it a good little stretch and fold a few times. It helps uh, make it more airy and light. Then just replace your film and towel and it'll be ready to go until morning. Good morning from the Smith house. We girls are getting ready to go and check our sourdough and see how it has risen uh, throughout the night. So let's go take a peek. Let's see. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Okay, let's see what mine looks like. Oh, mommy, look at mine. Oh, beautiful. All right, so next up, I've brought my stuff in here to my dining room table. So I have a nine inch pan that I'm going to be using to put the cinnamon rolls into to bake. I have a rolling mat. I'm gonna go grab some flour, some parchment paper, and the sourdough itself. I'm just gonna take some parchment paper and crinkle it up a little bit so it goes down into my pan easily and line my pan well so that it's easy to get the cinnamon rolls out. We don't want a sticky mess. Since our dough is really sticky, we wanna go ahead and flour our surface really well so that it's not getting stuck to everything while we're trying to roll it out into that rectangular shape. Look at how beautiful you are. Whoa, that looks so yummy. Yeah. I can't wait to eat it. Once you gently bring your sourdough out of your bowl, you want to go ahead and start patting it into that rectangular shape. Be careful not to rip or stretch it. We're really just gently patting it to be a rectangle. Once we have our dough in a rectangle like that, we're gonna go ahead and let it rest for about 10 minutes. We're not gonna overdo it with the dough. We're gonna give it some time to relax before we start rolling it out. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going ahead and preparing the filling, which is going to be six tablespoons of softened butter, half of a cup of cane sugar, and a tablespoon of cinnamon. And it looks yummy. Mm -hmm. So when you're all done, it's basically going to form like a paste that um, you can smush on there when the time's right. Okay, I gotta get some of my flour. While we're rolling, we're really shooting to keep the dough in that rectangular shape. We want our long side to be 16 inches and our short side to be about a foot long. One last roll over on that side. Love it. it. Uh -huh. Go for it. Ooh, so puffy. Mm -hmm. It's sourdough. So sourdough is really puffy and good like, especially mommy's. Next up, we're adding our filling. 
delicious. Love this part of the cinnamon roll. When you first get started, it might seem like you don't have enough of it to cover the entire piece of dough that you have. Uh, I have doubled it before. It does make a lot of filling, so if you love a lot, then that's totally fine. But the amount that I showed you before in the bowl will be perfect to cover it. We also want to remember to keep at least a small margin around the outside of the dough. Okay, so I guess Mommy's taking her dough and she's rolling it. When you're done spreading your filling, go ahead and start the rolling process. At first, it's not gonna look super pretty. It's gonna feel like you're just basically folding it over in the middle, uh, which kind of happens, but that's okay. Just keep going. Try to make sure that you're keeping a tight roll, and as long as you do that, it'll be totally fine. It does not have to be perfect. Next, trim the ends. That nice piece I just oh, cut. I see the filling. I see the filling. And then you're going to divide your roll as evenly as you possibly can into eight pieces. So I just do a mark in the center first and then divide that by two and each of those by two. Next up, we're just going to load up that springform pan with all of those nice cinnamon rolls. There. So now that we have those all prepped, I'm just gonna cover them with a wet tea towel and they're gonna rest for another hour. All right, I could have let them rise a little bit longer, but we are on the go this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these into the oven and they're gonna bake for around 35 minutes while I'm getting the rest of our breakfast ready. I just put a couple of tablespoons of butter into the bowl and I'm putting a third of a block of cream cheese into here. Um, then I'm gonna add some powdered sugar, like around half of a cup or so, which is what I have basically in this bag. So I'm just gonna add that whole thing in there. Then in a minute, I'm gonna add a tablespoon or two of milk to it just to get it to the consistency that I want for the glaze before I pour it over the cinnamon rolls. Finally, after they've had a few minutes to cool, I'm gonna go ahead and slather that icing on there. It is literally perfect. Creamy, smooth, not too sweet, but everything that you want in an icing for cinnamon rolls. And here is the finished product. They are beautifully fluffy and soft. They make a perfect addition to breakfast or even as a nice treat after dinner too. And of course, they're always a big hit with the kids. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Sew and Grow for more videos like it and others about homesteading and our journey as we find our new land.